Hey, so I'm going to give a quick demonstration of how you can use these brainstorming pages to plan a story. I have not planned this out in advance, so I hope it goes well. I'm going to go ahead and use version 2 of the planner, which is the one that has a plot diagram on it. Okay, so uh, the very first thing we're asked to do in our topic brainstorm, like if you already know what you want to write your story about, you can skip step 1, but I'm going to, I'm going to model using step 1. Okay. Three happy moments in my life. Um, let's see, when my nephew was born. Oh, that's really, really small. Let me make that a little bigger. My nephew was born. I would say when I graduated from college. That's definitely a happy moment. I'm just picking the first things that come to mind, right? I'm not worrying too much about if they're good ideas or not. If you listen too much to that inner critic that tells you stuff is bad, then you'll never write anything, right? So just push past that, right? Um, I don't know, when I went to Disneyland it was re really fun. It wasn't like it changed my life, but it was fun. Three sad or scary moments. Uh, when I got lost, that's also hard to read, dang, okay. Um, when I got lost at uh, San Diego Zoo, I remember that was pretty scary for me as a kid. Um, Oh, there was this time this drunk guy wanted to kiss me, and I said no, and he tried to attack me. Um, I ran into a skunk while camping. Three life-changing moments. Um, I would say when I was a missionary for my church, um, deciding to become a teacher like every day is kind of Without sounding sappy, really teaching has changed my life, okay? Um, and da, da, da. probably like the, this is random, but the day in sixth grade that I made some of my best friends uh, who stayed my friends through high school and really were a good influence in my life. Cool. So those are all those. And then you can also brainstorm po possible topics for a fictional narrative, okay? This could be anything at all. Um, I don't know, things that come to mind off the top of my head. Monsters, because when I was a kid, I was scared of monsters a lot. Maybe I could write a story about monsters. Being able to fly. I think that's a cool thing. I have dreams about it sometimes, OK? Or I could do fan fiction. I really like the game Portal. Maybe I could write a story that is set in the same universe as the game, OK? Cool. Now it says to circle or highlight your favorite narrative topic so far. Actually, I could write about a few of these, but I'm guessing that some of you guys, if you haven't already heard my story on this, are probably wondering about the drunk guy who tried to attack me. So I'm going to go with that, OK? So for plot brainstorm, you are just figuring out the main details in your story. This is like the skeleton of your story. Every good story has a very defined beginning, middle, and end, and sometimes stuff that comes after the ending, OK? Um, you can do the same thing with the other graphic organizer. With this one, it's very similar. The only difference is that it doesn't. It mostly focuses on just beginning, middle, and end, whereas this one focuses on like six different parts. This one just focuses on beginning, middle, end, OK? But anyway, going back to this. So I'm going to double click so I can type in here. Um, you need to either start off with where your story begins or where your story ends. That's very important, OK? Um, I think for the climax, I'm going to start with this because this is what I already know, OK? The climax is the most important moment in your story. For me, that's when the drunk guy tried to attack me. He like jumped forward and tried to attack me. Drunk guy jumped forward and tried to attack me. Okay, I'm just going to give one or two sentences here. I don't need to say everything, okay? I'm just going to kind of jump around as I see fit. Now I'm going to jump to the beginning, right? If you think about the beginning and the ending of your story first, that's going to make it much easier to figure out what goes in the middle because the middle just leads up to the end. So let's see. I mean, I could start all the way back when I decided to be a missionary for my church, but honestly, I don't think that's very interesting. That's not a very interesting place to start. You don't need to know my whole life right now. I just want to focus on that one specific experience. So I'm actually going to start on the street 
outside of the bar where this drunk guy came out, right? Okay, so I'm running to the bus at nighttime in Argentina. It was almost 9 p.m. Me and Aaron, my friend who was the other missionary with me, passed the bar, okay? So that's the exposition. That's me setting up the story. Here's where I am. But I'm starting very quickly. I'm not going to bore my reader with tons of extra stuff first, okay? The inciting incident is what really gets your story going and gets your readers interested, and it's what leads up to your climax. So in our case, um, the drunk guy didn't just appear out of nowhere. What happened was my friend Aaron dropped a bunch of like missionary pamphlets that he had with him, and then all these drunk guys came out and started to laugh at us. And that was what got the attention of this big drunk guy and kind of led to all this. So I'm going to say, you know, Aaron dropped his papers. I didn't notice and kept running. We must have looked funny. Drunk guys coming out of the bar started laughing at us. Okay. Now for rising action, you can have more than one event. I'm actually going to copy this with control C and then you control V to paste put more than one event in here. That's just how I, it's easier for me to think of it that way, okay? Um, oh, I forgot to mention it's Easter time. That's an important thing for this story. I don't really know where the best place is to say that yet, so I'll, I'll wait on that, okay? But anyway, what happened was, uh, so Aaron's trying to pick up his papers and I come over to help him and this big drunk guy with a shirt on his head, like a turban almost, but he's still wearing his own shirt. So he must have taken someone else's shirt. Comes over and he was jolly. And he says, Felices Pascuas, which means Happy Easter in, uh, in Spanish. And kisses Aaron, which is, I probably have to explain here for those who don't know. Beso is like a way to say hi in Argentina and many cultures around the world. They, they, will, they will kiss to say hello. So that was normal. But um, basically, I didn't want to have any of that. Okay, I was uncomfortable. I didn't want a beso. So I stuck out my hand and offered a handshake instead. And this guy, well, I guess that would kind of be the next main event, right? So this is setting up. The drunk guy comes over. He kisses Aaron. I say no thanks. Now, the next major thing that happens in my story was he got mad. <laughs> like, he kind of looked at my fist and he was like, Oh, and then like his face twisted into anger as I handshake, gave him the handshake into anger as I shook his hand. Um, and then going from that, so then he kind of like, we tried to peel away because we were like, okay, it's time for us to go. And this guy keeps walking after us and he keeps yelling and he keeps yelling, happy Easter, like Felices Pascuas, like really angry. So the guy follows us to bus stop, yelling, happy Easter. And basically, I tried to ignore him. And I was just standing there waiting for the bus because it was really late. And Buenos Aires is a big city. So we didn't want to like run off into the darkness at past 9 p.m. That would have been dangerous. It's much safer to stay in a public area. But at the same time, this guy is yelling in my face. Like, really angry. Happy Easter, happy Easter. And, uh, oh yeah, all the people in their cars look at us. And he's like, look forward, nothing's going on. Todos miren por adelante. Which was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Okay. And um, I still didn't run off because I was like, I don't know what to do. Maybe he won't do anything because all these people are here. I was not thinking about the fact that he was drunk. Okay. Uh, and then he says, I'm going to break your head in. Te voy a romper la cabeza. Okay. And that gets us to my climactic event, right? The moment where everything's on the line, this junk, drunk guy jumped forward and tried to attack me. Well, what else could I add to that? Well, um, thankfully, he had a friend following nearby who actually jumped up and grabbed him so he couldn't attack me. I was very surprised. But um, his friend, who was not that big, jumped forward and helped me out, okay? At that point, the guy's like, uh, he's like moving back and forth, trying to get out of his friend's grip and trying to get me. Uh, we look over 
So this is where it's not as exciting as the climax, right? Following action is like the stuff that comes afterwards that you still need to tell an interesting story. So we look over and see the bus is like, I don't know, it was like three blocks away maybe. And the, the bus driver is like motioning, like, come here, come here, because you can see what's happening. Uh, motioning us to come. So we ran off. I don't even remember. I might have even said something like, well, we got to go. Bye. Because <laughs> that's how my brain works when I'm under pressure. Uh, and we ran into the bus. And the bus driver gave some polite small talk like, oh, that was a situation. And we're like, yeah. And then we sat down in our chairs. And that was where, as I sat down, I realized, like, I could have I could have died or been seriously injured there. Like, holy crap, why? I just barely escaped this awful situation. Um, and then resolution, a lot of stories are going to have resolution, which is like, okay, what happens after the following action? This is like the new normal. Um, oftentimes it's where the characters have learned something or they've changed somehow, or maybe you give like a cliffhanger if you're setting up like a sequel story or a sequel episode of show or movie or something. Uh, for me, I think this is going to be where I share some sort of lesson I learned. Um, because I think it just makes sense. It will make it feel like a more satisfying ending if I share with you what I think about this whole experience. So I learned, well, first of all, I learned to respect culture. I thought that the beso wasn't that important. And then normally if somebody wasn't drunk, it probably wouldn't be, but for this drunk guy, it was a big deal, right? So I learned to respect culture. Maybe I should have just done the beso. <laughs> And then, like, Matt washed my face when I got home. Because this guy stunk. I forgot to mention that. He stunk really bad. Uh, but we'll get into more imagery later, okay? Maybe I should have just done the baso. I would have lived. Um, I mean, obviously, I also need to stand my ground. But if I'm going to not give a baso, I probably needed a better backup plan than I'm going to stand at the bus stop and just hope that he gets bored and walks away. Because that obviously did not happen. And it was only because I was very lucky, or in my opinion... <laughs> Maybe blessed a little bit by somebody up there. But either way, you know, oh gosh, that could have gone so bad, right? So I'd just say maybe I should have done the beso or had a decent backup plan. I'll figure out something that sounds cooler to end with. But that's that's basically what's in my head, okay? So as you can see, by picking either to start, where to start, or where to end, and then kind of filling in the rest of the details from there, it gives the story what I hope is more of an interesting arc, Right? I didn't just say, oh, I'm going to start when I was 10 and I wanted to be a missionary for my church. And then I'm going to jump forward five years and then I'm going to jump forward two years. Like, no, nobody wants to hear all that. Right? By making it more focused, especially with nonfiction where you're writing about your own life, really helps to plan out this arc of the plot so that you have a more focused experience. Okay? So that is my plot brainstorm. What I'm going to show next time in another video is how I would take this basic plot brainstorm and flush it out with a lot of imagery and interesting sensory details so that my story pulls readers in and really helps them to feel what I felt like in this moment. Thanks for watching. Now try making your own brainstorm diagram for your own plot of your own story.